let's start with the meeting today. The meeting today is a technology showcase. We wanted to start with one of the companies who has made such a big impact by helping people design photonic systems and photonic systems on chip. We're going to go to a company, a success story for the European industry, from the German industry, from the Berlin industry. We're going to go to VPI. And we have with us Chris Maloney, who is not based in Berlin. He's based in the capital of Optis Worldwide, Rochester, New York, who is going to talk to us about what they call the photonic design workflow. Chris Maloney, thank you so much for opening the speaking today. The world, the attention of everyone watching you, is yours. Yes, thank you, Jose. <clears throat> and it's good to see you representing Optica here. So, so welcome. Um, so yeah, thanks, Jose. Um, yeah, as he mentioned, I'm, I'm going to talk today about the, the photonic design workflow. And uh, just to get started, I'll give a little bit of background um, about VPI Photonics and who we are, if you're not familiar. But we offer um, software and services for, for photonic design automation. And we do this for various levels of abstraction. So, so we can start at the lowest level at um, device simulation. So this would be simulating waveguides and fibers. We can move up to component design for photonic integrated circuits, but also for fiber amplifiers and fiber devices. Um, and, and many of our, our customers are, are using our transmission design tools to design full um, optical communication systems um, as well as a number of other applications. And then we even touch a, a higher level of link engineering for internet service providers and equipment vendors for designing uh, uh, networks. They could be Access, um, uh, DWDM, uh, core metro networks. And you can see a, uh, our product portfolio here. So today I'm going to be focusing on a few different things. And I'll be moving between a few of the levels, starting at the device level with VPI Device Designer, moving up to uh, photonic circuits with VPI component maker photonic circuits, and then going up to transmission design with VPI transmission maker optical system. So you can see how these tools work together and how you, you can leverage the, the benefits of those. So, so yeah, as I mentioned, um, yeah, I'll be working through a workflow. Um, I'll be highlighting the design of an MMI. So a two by two uh, multi-mode interferometer. And I'll be starting at the device level, um, showing you what can, how this can be simulated, um, what some of the outputs can be, and how we can take those results and use them at the photonic integrated circuit level and actually design a, a mock sender modulator. Um, and then we'll take those results and take them all the way to the system level and design a, a coherent optical system. So, <clears throat> so yeah, I'll take you through that workflow. And um, one thing I'll just note is that it's not a one-way street. Um, so you can jump in and out of this workflow wherever your, uh, wherever your requirements take you. So you could actually start at the system level and use that to define your requirements for your, for your photonic integrated circuit. And one thing I'll just note is that um, we can do this all through um, simulation, but we could also use real world data. So if you have, uh, if you're working with a foundry, a photonics foundry, you can actually use their PDK building blocks at the circuit level and use real data here. So I'll take you through that and I'll, I'll get started here with VPI Device Designer, which is uh, an easy to use tool that's powered by Python. So the, the user interface actually lives in uh, Python Jupyter Notebooks. So it's easy to get up to speed on this. It's easy for, um, I mean, so many people are using Python these days that um, it's, it's easy to learn. And it supports the modeling of passive devices. So you can, you can get into straight and bent waveguides. You can, you can look at multi-mode fibers and, and many more applications. And one of the benefits of this is that we can actually leverage uh, Python libraries. Um, so they have a strong um, suite of libraries um, and we can do things like run optimization tasks using those. Um, but also we can, use, we can use the software to verify cross sections, verify data that's, that's coming from um, your real, real world measurements. And this integrates nicely with our, our circuit level simulator as well. Um, so within VPI Device Designer, there's a, a number of finite element uh, 2D mode solvers that you can use. So this just shows a few of the applications that you can touch on. So again, multi-core fibers, waveguide bends, directional couplers. Um, so it's a, there's a customizable analysis that you can do um, for a wide, wide range of applications. Um, it also includes 2D and 3D beam propagation method. And so you can see a few examples here. Um, so you can really study something like an MMI where you have a, 
with a certain input, you can you can um, really understand what the the port modes might look like at the at the at the two outputs here. Um, you can define uh, a wide range of geometries, use different materials to really study um, what's going on in terms of the transmission here. Um, so yeah, to to walk you through this, <clears throat> one thing we can do is define our define our MMI. We could define the shape, the materials that are used, the different widths, lengths. Um, evaluate uh, the electric field using the beam propagation method. And on the right, we actually show a cut line of the, the, two, um, the two ports on the right here. So those are our output ports that we're interested in. And from that, we can, uh, we can calculate an F S matrix and actually use that um, as an input to our next level of simulation. And another thing we can do if we want to study things like fabrication tolerances is vary these the different uh, maybe the width of the MMI and see how the S matrix changes and use that in our simulations. So I'm going to move up to the next level, um, BPI Component Maker Photonic Circuits. That's a schematic based tool, and there's a number of uh, building blocks that we can use. Um, different active uh, devices, so you can actually stack these together. Um, um, to uh, put together something like a, a semiconductor laser, a number of signal, signal processing elements, as well as passive and, and hybrid circuits shown here. And so this, this software tool, um, it's very fast, but also accurate. So the simulations could take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. Um, and you can use this to des um, study design alternatives, tune circuit parameters. Um, I'll actually show um, in a moment here, I'm studying some fabrication tolerances. So one, one example of something you can design here is like a, a widely tunable laser. And there's a, a number of different types of analyses that you can, you can run for a wide range of applications. Um, so, <clears throat> so with uh, VPI Component Maker Photonic Circuits, we have a, a, a number of built-in analytical models. You can see the building blocks here. And there's a few ways to get information into those building blocks. And so the first way is you can just Use the built-in uh, the built-in models, adjusting the parameters. You can define your own expressions, but you can also load in data files. And so this could be um, bringing in your measurement data into the into the models, but it could also be um, simulation data. So from BPI Device Designer, we can load in uh, an S matrix. So there's a, a number of ways you can use this. Now I'm going to work through a, a short example here where we can actually use our MMI simulation results in a circuit level design. So, so on the left, we actually have an unbalanced uh, mock sender interferometer. And on the right, you can see the spectrum with the uh, uh, free spectral range and the resonance frequencies for a specific, uh, spe sorry, specific nominal um, waveguide and MMI widths. And so one thing we can do is actually consider fabrication tolerances here and run the simulation a thousand times. So this can result in some strong fluctuations that you see here. You know, it's kind of a mess right now um, in, in the transfer characteristic there. So in this case, the free spectral range actually stays quite constant, um, but you'll notice that the resonance frequency is shifting. It's moving all over the place due to the phase noise introduced uh, by varying these device parameters that you see here. So a standard solution um, to this problem is actually to add a thermal or electrical, electro-optical phase shifter. Um, so you can see that here, and at least one of these arms of the, of the mock sender. And by applying current to that phase shifter, we can choose the phase in the arm of the mock sender and actually control the resonance frequency of the frequency response. Um, so to support this operation, we actually have a, a parameter in our, in our uh, in our models called phase error correction. And this uh, enables an automated uh, phase noise compensation. So at a, uh, at a specific um, reference frequency. And that em emulates the impact of optimizing your uh, thermal or electro-optical uh, phase shifter. So now if we actually apply that, that automated uh, phase noise compensation, um, we actually chose a reference frequency um, to, uh, to optimize this for. And we see a drastic improvement in the, in the performance. And you'll notice that it's not perfect. So there's still some, you know, it looks like noise here. And this is actually due to the fact that there's uh, tolerances in the MMI and, the, and in the, the waveguide attenuation that we're not compensating for. So we're actually using that device level um, 
simulation of the MMI to see this uh, more realistic um, response. So I'm gonna move up to the next level, BPI transmission maker optical systems. And so the applications that, um, that, use, uh, that are used here are for short reach, long haul, DWDM systems, but also uh, like radio over fiber, microwave photonics, and a number of free space optical um, applications like satellite communications. And, and we've been seeing more interest in LIDAR lately. Um, <clears throat> so some of the benefits here, is we can, we can do a wide range of analyses. So we can study the OSNR, the bit error rate, TDEQ of the system, and compare different technologies um, and designs. So I'll, I'll walk you through uh, one, one application here. This is a 16 qualm signal over 10 kilometers of single mode fiber. So on the very left, we have our electrical signal sources to define our waveform. We have our optical source and IQ modulator here. So you actually see these MMIs um, from the circuit level design. And even inside of the Mox Ender modulators, um, if you look inside of that uh, building block, there's MMIs there as well. So that passes over fiber, goes through our optical hybrid, gets detected by a few photodiodes, and we do some analog to digital conversion, clock recovery, DSP, and we can analyze a constellation, um, the resulting constellation here. And so this is the ideal case for an ideal MMI. But if we use our simulation results, um, we can actually see how the constellation will change, um, showing some of these uh, impairments in, in the MMI. So you can see it's slightly degraded and it can actually give us more uh, real world type of simulation. And I have one last example. We can even take this to the next level. Um, so this is actually using a, an example of a silicon photonics based micro ring modulator at the circuit level. Um, we, can, we can simulate this, understand how um, the modulator can be tuned with voltage and see how the, the peak wavelength shifts. Um, and one of the things that we can, we can study here is uh, we can see the nonlinear and dynamic um, transfer function. Um, it's a, I'm sorry, the, non, uh, the static and dynamic transfer functions are nonlinear. And so this is what we really want to study and understand how does it, how does this affect our system performance? Um, and so we can actually plug in our uh, micro ring modulator building block into our system. So here we have a laser driver, a laser, a fiber, photodiode. And we can actually connect this to a uh, Keysight ADS dynamic input and output and simulate this using Keysight ADS. So we can do a full electrical, optical, electrical uh, link simulation and really understand the performance uh, well, with more accuracy in the, in the electrical, using these electrical components. And you can see the VPI optical link um, black box here in, uh, in Keysight ADS software. And you can see how that actually impacts the, the, the eye diagram here. So it leads to uh, level specific uh, inner symbol interference and requires nonlinear equalization. So just to summarize what we talked about here, um, the photonics design workflow, we started at the device level using PPI device designer, took, took our results, used it at the um, photonic integrated circuit level. And actually in the same user interface in PPI design suite, um, we took that to the system level um, using PPI transmission maker optical systems, which integrates nicely with Keysight ADS for electrical optical to co-design. And I'll, uh, last thing I'll just mention is that when you're working at the photonic integrated circuit level, um, we could use simulation results. We could actually go to uh, the photonic foundries and use some of their PDKs as the building blocks. We can and we can validate the measurement results using uh, Device Designer um, and, uh, and actually export our designs to various layout tools. So very flexible design environment. Um, and <clears throat> so, so hopefully what you can take away from this is that using our uh, photonic design automation tools, you can take your, your design ideas to fabrication and easily insert those in, uh, design tools into your existing workflow. Um, so you might use a portion of this, you might use the entire workflow um, so that you can study your designs at these various levels of abstraction. Um, so yeah, th thanks for your attention um, and please feel free to reach out to us um, and we can, um, organize a demo or a software evaluation. So my email's there. Please write Chris it down. Chris.maloney at vpiphotonics.com. Chris, you are not going to be surprised by what's coming.
but it's a big deal for me. Ladies and gentlemen, my first ever Optica question, Chris. Hundreds of people listening to this presentation. What can you do for them? And most important, what can they do for you? Great, great question, Jose. So, so first of all, um, what can we do for you? Is you know, our, our mission is to empower you to define the cutting edge. So obviously, if you want to get in touch with us and use these tools, that's what we want to do for you. Um, something that you can do for us is actually, um, we're always, um, you notice that our, our software is very interoperable. So we're always looking to see um, what types of partnerships we can form. So that would include working with various of the, the photonic foundries, getting, getting real data into our software so we can bring our clients to the foundries and we can collaborate that way. Um, we're also looking, we're interested in unique use cases. So especially if you have, um, if you're interested in this electrical, optical, electrical um, co-design, we're really interested to understand your use cases and we can learn from you and help you um, develop your products as well.